Hey everybody, happy Wednesday to you. It's kind of late in the day. You'll probably be getting this, watching the video about church time as a regular scheduled time comes around. You can tell by looking at me, got my work clothes on. Uh, been working over at the association office for a little while, feeling a whole lot better until about this time of the day and then I'm about out of energy. Uh, been doing my daily Bible reading. Uh, a couple weeks ago I was in Exodus and came apart across uh, the section in Exodus where uh, Israel experienced that divine deliverance out of Egypt by the power of God and took them to the to the out of Egypt across the Jordan and then into the wilderness and you know we're looking at at six hundred over six hundred thousand uh, fighting men. Uh, scholars say, you know, you're looking at a minimum of probably 2 million people, upwards of 6 million people, all being led across that desert, experiencing the mighty hand, the mighty power of God through, through all the plagues in Egypt, uh, crossing the Red Sea on dry ground and Pharaoh's army destroyed. Now they find themselves on a journey in the wilderness. Hey, I'm going to read out of Exodus 15. We're going to look at verses 22 to 27. We're going to talk about survival in the wilderness. Read with me if you have your Bibles. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and then he went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days into the wilderness and found no water. Now when they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore the name was called Marah. And that means bittered. Uh, then, and the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, and he cast it into the waters, and they were made sweet. There he made a statute and ordinance for them, and there they tested him and said, "If you, God said, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep his statutes, I will put none of these diseases on you which I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Then he came to Elam where there were 12 wells of water, 70 palm trees, so they camp there by the waters. You know, when we look at this text, they come through the Red Sea and three-day journey into this wilderness. Our text opens up with Israel traveling that three days from the Red Sea into the wilderness. And, and on that third day, they come across, they're having this great thirst, the wilderness it is, and they're looking for water. They find a, a body of water, and, and what happens? It's bitter water, so bitter that you, you can't drink it. So now what? Now what? Moses let them out here, and there's no water to drink. What are they going to do? So if they were delivered from slavery from the Red Sea, is it now just for them to perish? And you know, I want you to see, we read this and we go, yeah, but that was the Israelites. You know, that's us too, because we find ourselves in the wilderness. We see where God's delivered us, has kept us, has provided for us. And we're taking that next journey, that next journey. You know, I'm sitting here thinking we're coming hopefully to the end of COVID. We just came out of, of, of a terrible, bitter winter storm with, with bunches of snow, frozen water, and then no water. And now the water that we have, we have to boil for a minute before we can drink it. Truly, we are in the wilderness, and just like God took care of those people, he will take care of us. I want you to notice three things, and Dr. Vine points this out, three things uh, that happen in the wilderness, three things that, that, that can be us that was as well as the Israelites. What is that? Well, first, traveling through the wilderness, we, we see uh, verse 23 where he tells them, uh, you got to excuse me here because this is split on a couple pages for me. Uh, find the right page here. Now, when they came to Mara, they could not drink the waters of Mara, for they were bitter, therefore it was called Mara. There's another uh, usage of this word Mara, and that is in the book of Ruth. When you read the book of Ruth, when uh, Naomi came back to her hometown, uh, 
with Ruth, they they called her uh, Naomi, and she said, don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara, meaning bitter because her life was bitterness. Her husband had died. Her sons had died. Now it was just her. So we see this word is used again, but the traveling Hebrews found themselves in bitterness. Uh, when they found no water, I think... Not they did what we do. We do what they did. We really did. When things, we find ourselves in the wilderness, what do we do? We start complaining. It's too hot. It's too cold. It's icy. I wish it would rain. It's too much rain. Uh, we want this. There's always something that, that, that they're complaining about. And I know that it was probably a panic that had set in over the people. I, I get that. Because here you're traveling in, a, in an unknown area, and it is wilderness. You're thirsty, and you come across water. You've got all these people, all this livestock, and the water you come across, you can't drink. So there was probably frustration, fear, panic come out. And who did they take it out on? Their leader, Moses. You brought us out here to die of of thirst. You know, Lord, you brought me to this point and here's where you're going to leave me hanging at. This is what my lot in life is going to be. They complained uh, against Moses for bringing them to the desert only to make it appear as they were going to die. And you know, Life has its undeniable bitters, uh, places and experiences that are there. We cannot over overlook that. Every spear has its bitterness. A marriage, new home, business failure, or business venture that fails, uh, children. We all have that Mara in our life and understand that Mara is only for a season when we cry out to the right person. But we, we've all said Mara over some water hole complained about something that wasn't going, a circumstance that came up in our life and we faced. And we wonder, why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me? There's a bitterness. But I want you to see with this bitterness, they came, the water was there, they get excited only to find out it's bitter. There is something else that happened. There's a sweetness that comes. God furnished verses 25 and twenty. Six, we see Moses cried out to the Lord. God showed him a tree. He cast it into the waters. They were made sweet. Then he made a statue, an ordinance for them. Where And there he tested them and said, If you will diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God, do what is right in his sight, give ear to all his commandments and statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I brought upon the Egyptians. So we see the, the, the sweetness is that God furnished it. When the people came to Moses, Moses didn't wring his hands. Oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Oh, these people are going to stone me. These people are going to leave me. These people, no. And, and, and if you're a leader, you know that's happened to you. You're, you're going, why me? I'm just the leader. And, and Moses, but I want you to understand what Moses did is what we need to do, what the people needed to do then. What is that? We need to go to God. We, what did Moses do? He went to the Lord with their complaints. He told the Lord about that. The people complained to Moses, what shall we drink? And then what's the next verse? Moses cried out to the Lord. He cried out to God. God showed him. He said, here, this is a tree. Cut the tree, put it in the water. And, and you know, if that was us, we're going to say, well, that makes no sense at all. Why would you cut, cut a tree and put it in the water? You got to remember... This is God. I think this is more of an obedience test than a scientific test. Well, Lord, you know that won't work. God didn't call us to figure out how it's going to work. He called us to obedience. And Moses went to him with the complete uh, complaints, and God said, Here, cut this tree down, throw it in the water. And he did, and it made the water sweet. And it was sweet enough to relieve the thirst of the people that were with him. Similarly, we have to bring our complaints, all, our, all, all of our bitter experiences, we have to bring them to God. You know, we can cry out and, and we can go to other people and we can ask, I'm a pastor, people come to me, what do you think I should do? You know, sometimes God gives me the answer, it's very obvious, sometimes I have to say, you know, we need to pray about this. Let's let's see about this. Deacons and I met on Tuesday. We were looking some direction for the church, and I asked some questions, and, and they really didn't know the answer. And I said, well, guys, what we need to do is pray about this, and then we'll meet back and talk about it. We're going to cry out to God. We're going to pray to God and have him 
wait for him to tell us what our next move is going to be. God knows how to deal with the problems. God knew where the tree was at, and he knew that it would change the water so we can be sure that God knows how to sweeten our bitter waters, what we come across. Beside each bitter mara in life, a tree grows to sweeten it. But we have to seek God to find where that sweetness is. So we see the Hebrews found a bitterness. God furnished a sweetness. But you know, there's one more thing that's there. And that's that's the very end of this, that, that last verse or two that uh, that comes up, verse 27. He, he led them to Elam. What is Elam? We see the, the bitterness, the sweetness, and with that sweetness comes a time of refreshing. God provided a refreshment. Look at verse 27 with me. What's he say? They came to Elam where there were 12 wells of water and 70 palms. So they camped out there by the waters. God told them if, in verse 26, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, Give ear to his stat, his commandments and keep all his statutes. I won't put any of these diseases on you. And because of that, here, here's your freshness. I want you to see, God didn't just give them a sweet water. He gave them a rest. I want you to think about this a minute. Can you imagine a million and a half, two million, six million people going three days journey into the wilderness? Can you imagine that, that, that line, that width of people, length and width of people that are going across? And if you're toward the back or the middle, you're going to have a dust that's being kicked up. You find the water that's there. You can't drink it because it's, it's, it's bitter. Now it's made sweet, and you think, wow, this is good. But God also provided them an Elam. That Elam's that oasis. That Elam is the place where the presence of God was at. Seven wells of water, 70 palm trees. I don't know what that is in relation to the, to the number of people that was there, but it's a whole lot better than an open wilderness that's in front of you. And it's there because God gave it to them. That trial was there. He took them three days. He tested them. He, he, the bitterness was there. Moses cried out. The sweetness came. And now there's a refreshing that comes, a freshness that is there. And God says, now, if you will obey me, I can do this for you. I won't bring any of those diseases on you. Refresh yourselves. The freshness that is there. Isn't it always awesome when you come to God, when you feel the presence of God, there's that freshness that is there, that refreshing in your spirit. We, we, we may be assured that the spiritual Elam awaits where God refreshes our soul, but we have to ask for it. And you know, sometimes the answer that we get for that bitterness may not make sense at all, but we have to trust God. And afterwards, you will find a time to rest, relax, cool down, quench your thirst, eat good food, go fishing, whatever it is. There will be that time for you. Where's your Elam at? Have you found it? Are you in the wilderness and that bitterness is there? Cry out to God and he will bring that sweetness and the answer to you. I pray this week. I pray you're not in the wilderness. I pray that, that you're at the sweetness. But if you're not, pray to God. Find that sweetness that leads to a freshness in your life. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you just for this week and where it's been a wilderness. Help us to see the freshness that lies to us, for us, just for the asking that, that, that bitter water can be made sweet and a refreshing to our soul can come. Father, thank you for this week. We love you. We ask these things in your name. Amen. God bless you guys. I will see you on Sunday.